Hi, and welcome to our Bot War show. My name's Mark, Bot War enthusiast. We have Drew from Nine Tail Hobbies and Anthony, Traders Galaxy extraordinaire, owner, <laughs> distributor uh, with me tonight. We're going to be talking all things Bot War, more specifically, all things Hive Lords, um, which is a, the new Infestor guide that's just come out. It's got some new units in it, and we're going to get right stuck into those and talking about the faction and all the wonderful things that the new faction does. But before we do that, I'm going to throw over to Anthony. He's going to give us a bit of an understanding of what's going on with Traders Galaxy and where we're at. Anthony. Well, yes, it's been um, it's been a crazy week. There's uh, once again, I've started spinning too many plates, and um, I'm actually looking for a ho- looking forward to my holiday next week, which is going to be good. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of stuff happening, as you know, Mark, in the thirty millimeter space with our first World War II stuff coming and steel hyenas and like loads of stuff coming out for them and beat them up in production now, which is really good and all paid for and everything. So that's a weight off me. And Congratulations on getting that Kickstarter finished. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad it's all funded and paid for and everything's like now I can just leave it up to them to just make it all. And that's all going to be good. So that that's that's going to be fine. It actually is quite an easy one on the scale of pre-orders compared to the Red Star one. Like that's because there's hardly any extra pieces in the Red Star one to mess up. Uh, in the sorry, in the beat 'em up Kickstarter one, whereas the Red Star one piece is a bit of a nightmare for people to pick. But um, yeah, so that's all good. And I'm painting. Um, blue speedsters at the moment uh, just to get some up and running i have just yeah we have bot war three rumors spinning around for next year and yeah i'm just been doing lots of changes to the website and i've got a lot of molds to make over the next month so lots of stuff some cool robots and stuff arriving from the printers soon. So yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff happening that, yeah, I don't want to go into huge detail. Stay tuned and we'll see more with uh, upcoming mm-hmm. Facebook posts and, and later posts and, and video that we'll probably be covering off on this as well. But that's I'm waiting to see your 3d printed village, <laughs> your, your 3d printed right. city, I should say. Yeah. Well, uh, I was speaking to Drew as we were starting up. It's almost three by five now. I've got four warehouses. Wow. Um, and we're hoping to to maybe do a photo if I can get a enough chance to build them tomorrow. Um, mm. tomorrow it should be at three by five. So I'm looking forward to getting that table up to three by six in the not too far distant future. Yeah, wow. Some, um, some reports going, battle, battle reports with uh, mm. urban city and um, playable interiors, the whole bit. Yeah, awesome. That'll oh, actually you're going be really full, good. full inside and outside. Absolutely. So I think uh, that'll be really good for beat em up, actually. Yeah. Well, I that's... think that'll be like because you can then like use the 30 millimeter rules to go up a level, um, you know, knock people down a level. Um, I think it'll work quite well with the zone play. Let's throw people through. As long as you n- numbered the zones correctly. So yeah. when you draw the card, it corresponds to which level of the building and that. I think it'll be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. And as I say, I think it'll give some really good stuff for beat em up and ROTD because um, mm. side building shooting out. Um, yeah, yeah. And give give some of the troops a bit more cover. Uh, mm. those, um, Raptor Borgs are uh, lurking around, hey, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what we need is a giant wall right through the middle of the game. <laughs> that can be arranged. <laughs> go down on the basketball court <laughs> so look it, I'm looking forward to getting that done and as I say my poor 3D printer uh, it's been getting working oh, but worked out over time in the last, yeah. last three to four weeks because um, the buildings aren't small either no they're they're quite large so um, anyway look forward to my Facebook post hopefully tomorrow <laughs> uh, and you'll get to see a little bit more about, about where that's at but we're going to talk Hive Lords I'm excited about Hive Lords yeah. Um, I'm going to throw over and add a uh, a screen in here. Um, here we go. So 
obviously we've got the Hive Lords, um, this fantastic new faction, um, which isn't really a new faction. It's adding to an existing faction, isn't it, Anthony? Um, yeah, it's sort of reworking an existing faction to sort of one thing that I wasn't comfortable with was that the investors had like a quite a specific build and that was like the most powerful build and everything else was less so <laughs> to be kind. Yes. Whereas how I really wanted them to work is to have several builds that people had to choose like and play in that particular way. So that's really what Hive Lords are about. Essentially using the Hive Lord to dictate what type of builds you have. Although that's not strictly true but it, it's it's sort of gives people an idea of what i meant well having played investors both played them and played against them they can be a tough faction previously and with the new additions um as you say anthony it gives different play styles you could have an aerials group you could have things tunneling up from underneath the ground um mm. Or as I don't doubt, as we get to your list, you'll be summoning things from a crazy number and all of a sudden yeah. new units are appearing that weren't there at the start. Yeah. Uh, so it gives depth. And I think, again, similar to what we're talking about with Atlanticans, it gives a different tournament play um, and it makes it hard to, to work around this because you think you've got it pegged for fighting one way and all of a sudden they're fighting completely differently. Um, yeah. But no doubt we'll get into that shortly because I know that having processed everybody's lists, there's similarities, but there's also differences. And I know that that will change the gameplay of how things mm. will. We'll get to that. Mm. We'll get to that. Um, Anthony, do you want to give us a bit of a background of how you see the investors and their history and their lord? You're, you're all yeah. the galaxy. Yes, sure. So the infest, like, um, I'm not even sure. Sorry. I think I might sneeze. <laughs> um, um, I'm not even sure 100%. It was very, very, very early on in the development of Bot War that the whole way the Infestors work and how they built into the law came about in the sense that, to me, like the whole story of the, like the Valiant's Deceivers side of the story um, is about like uh, essentially the war in heaven. So Galaxy rebels. Obviously, he, um, you know, is like you know your Satan type character, and Galaxy rebels and takes a certain amount of deceivers with him, and that's why they're called deceivers, by the way, as well. Um, it's like you play on demons and and things like that, but as but matching that in with like the computer or the um, computer code type of thing, uh, I don't know if you guys would all remember like defragging your computer, like, um, you know, watching the little bars go across and all the files getting the nice colors coming, whether it's, you know, when it's all, um, I know, glad I'm not old enough to remember all, all that, but um, I don't know if you... I don't. I imagine it's still. I imagine it's still a thing. I haven't defragged my computer for so long. I I don't even know if it exists anymore. But um, but yeah, essentially, I see it as if you're if if the deceivers are separated from the one and that ability to sort of like clean up all their files, then eventually they're going to continue to get to a place where they can no longer function properly, and that's really where what the investors are. The investors are. Uh, uh, deceivers that have sort of lost all their ability to be themselves, like all their personality files and all that sort of stuff. So they're effectively sort of like destroyed and just replaced by, um, you know, sort of that oblivion type place where they're replaced by sort of a nothingness shell. And that's really what the investors are. And the deceivers fear that because they, you know, they, they sort of lose themselves never to return. But the Hive Lords are a bit different. I've left a bit of mystery around who the Hive Lords are because being able to become an Infester is what we it was covered in the Mercs. I think it was the Mercs faction guide about um, a singularity event where the factory producing them has a sort of like a bit of a hiccup and creates an Infester instead, which then just flies off 
to join the Queen. So, and that's sort of how the Mercs are created as well, a little bit. But um, the Hive Lords are a bit different, and I've left a bit of mystery about who they really are because they're quite big, and there's really sort of no factories that produce massive Titan things like that. So, unless I get, I mean, well, that conspiracy was assembled like by hand, not really in a factory. So, but well, apart from that, yeah. Uh, variation Megatyrant was trying to work out some way around the infestorism, wasn't he? That's how the Yeah, queen... that's right. But that's how he created the Queen. So that was a one off as well. So, but she, so can... yeah. She seems to have some of her personality files still intact. Yeah, well, that's right. Because I think she went loony before she actually became an infestor. So one of her personalities. Is the investor and and the other personality is the queen, so that's sort of how she retains some of that control. Is that she sort of split personality type character, so um, which is a sort of a bit a bit of an odd one. But uh, she also has her messengers as well, which are like the six normal investors. So they still have a little bit of a resemblance of themselves, um, just a lot less. So. They're much more in, within control of the queen than, say, a deceiver is in control, being controlled by a Narsatron or someone like that. So they they don't really have a will of their own. We'll talk about some of those in our lists. Um, obviously, with uh, what we're talking about tonight, we've got obviously the Hive Lord faction, um, and it's important, useful for people to to know that there's <clears throat> mindless beast ability. Um, that is, if you choose a completely Hive Lord faction, that you'll get Mindless Beasts. And that means all units that have a super ability have the ultimate Martial Warrior special rule. Um, and that unit may use a special ability once per turn. And that's very important, uh, particularly in tournament play, particularly with things like circuit vi Circus Virus or Circuit Virus that we're going to talk about tonight, um, or Aerial Attacks. Um, mm. can actually be doing those not once a game, once a turn, so mm -hmm. um, with with this ability, and that that gives them a huge ability to sort of very much change up the game and how things are played. Um, yeah, they're very powerful now. But the the infestors themselves, especially the um, your basic guys, were underpowered for their points compared to say a deceiver, air warrior, or Atlantic and air warrior. But now they're pretty powerful. They're, they're a little bit cheap for their points, but I left it as as it was. I've always appreciated the low cost in points because you stack up this huge army um, and you take it take it down. You know you're going to lose some, but some will get through. And mm. got some pretty good stats, particularly on the shooting. Um, and if they mob attack in close attack, that can be very useful as well. And that's things like termite and the locust and and things like that. Mm. Uh, we'll get to some of those later because I know they come up in our list. Um, the first one I thought that we talk about tonight is the Queen. I know she's been around for some time. People do or don't take her. Um, obviously, she has circuit virus, um, and I thought I'd get Anthony to talk a bit about that because I know his list is very big on the circus virus mm -hmm. that we're, we're going to get onto. Um, but she's, you know, SR2, uh, meaning she goes really quick in the turn. Moves eight. She has excellent range attack, even better close attack. Um, four shields, eight hit points. She has combat scimitar on top of that, meaning she's re-rolling dice. Um, and she's got that fueled by hate, which is both good and bad. But, you know, if you really look at it, um, you roll that red shield dice and that's extra energy cubes, unless, of course, she gets nothing and then she takes damage. Mm. Um, but, you know, very, very useful. Um, very strong character and only 22 points in the grand scheme of things. Um, but take us through circuit virus. Cause I think that's probably the first thing we need to really talk about. Yeah. Well, she's not um, circuit virus is sort of the new super ability. That's unique to infestors, which is basically raise zombies. Um, so she's not as powerful as the summoner though in regards to um, circuit virus, like she can raise um, zombies once per turn with the mindless beast um, stuff. So I think from memory, I haven't got the book right in front of me, but I think it's one critical dice 
of um, investors. And red, red shield dice. Oh, one red. Oh, one red shield dice. Well, it's even. I've toned it down then. <laughs> <laughs> it was one critical dice. Um, but yeah, if it's one red shield dice, then um, yeah, I've turned it down. Toned it down. But essentially, you can raise them within ten inches, and you can probably correct me on that as well if you've got the book there um, in front of you. I do. Drew? I do. Um, I think it's within ten inches of fifteen. Her. Oh, 15. Sure. Okay, yeah. so I increase range and decrease the number. So um, it, the uh, summon infected is the critical die. Oh, okay. Summoning. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the um the upgrade. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah, only yeah. within six inches. And that's so a one off. Like that's a one off. On that. That's a one off as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can just that's once one use only. So that'll give get you infected like to a decent amount and then that's just a one-off upgrade and then it's discarded. But yeah, so I added that because it just seemed weird that she couldn't control infected as well. Like um, my thought was with the queen that she should be able to do most things that um, the others can do. Like she can already fly, which most of them can do. And it just seemed strange that she wouldn't have it. So I've I've added it in there as an option option. So, but I, I didn't actually increase the points for. Her. I don't think anything else has changed oh, too too time. much in it. So I, um, too much on her. I think it's mostly um, standard except for that circuit virus. Um, but yeah, like I th- I see the queen getting used a lot more in hive lords than in investors. Because in Festus, she sort of didn't fit with the way Infestors were skewed and she was sort of like an extra. Whereas in Hive Lords, she very much fits in with Hive Lords. I probably would see the Queen in nearly every list of Hive Lords, I think. But she's a good character. And as I say, I thought we'd include her. Well, she gets hammered by Gorg if if you're not careful. Gorg's mind control. Because... um, on an SR1, Gorg will basically freeze her. Yes. So you got to be watch it. Got to watch out when you play Overlords with because that's happened to me a couple of times. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> just the freezing. Yeah, Queen gets frozen. <laughs> so anyway, I thought we cover the Queen for that reason, um, but more importantly, we now move on to the Mothrock, um, which is where we start getting into the to, to the brand new units. Mm. Um, obviously very fast unit sr1 um, moves 10 so very agile um, and has it yeah that aerial ability where they can move obviously up to 30 inches couldn't they anthony if they use their special ability yep um, range attack three close attack three um, shield three health points nine um, and swarm lord they can take as many buzzer and swarm units as they want at no additional cost. And they've got the mind control. Um, Which is the one that uh, reduces shields if you're damaged. But still could be very useful. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah, brutal. So let's talk about it. Drew, what do you think? I love this guy. I mean, I'm a old school Mothra fan. So, you know, the, the, the <laughs> that was the inspiration overall. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, Infestors aesthetically is probably one of my favorite factions. It's just because they're so varied from all the other bot based factions. They've just got this cool, uh, feel to them. But, you know, you have the, the buzzers that work with Mothrock. So even if he is getting damaged, you can just throw these bodies in front of him so you know and mind control is one of my favorite abilities like it's just so cool because you can mess up someone's plans for the entire game you know they've got this big chunky defensive unit or whatever and you can just set it up to fall super easily um Mm. but yeah I, i like also that he's got this buffer that maybe if the buzzers are all taken out, you can move him completely across to the other side of the board and do what you need to. 
um, you know, consume or whatever to boost his health back up. Um, but stat wise, he's solid. I like that he's got energy of three because infestors, I think, Anthony, you did a good job of balancing them by they're kind of energy starved. Um, they are. And, that, and that's the thing. Like, you get mindless beast, right? And everyone's like, oh, I can do, I can do a super ability all the time. But actually, where are you getting the energy to do that with everybody? Yeah, exactly. That, that's that's the issue. Is like it it can be a bit of a because all even the the little tiny minions like the buzzers and stuff they've got hardly any energy. I don't think they've got any energy actually. The buzzers one uh, oh one they got one. They did have zero for a long time, and um in in testing and stuff. So it's not like you can. Like, it's one thing as well, like, if you played Mothrock right, it, he should never get killed because the buzzers are, like, absorbing all the damage. But the buzzers are also holding him back from speed because the buzzers only have one energy. So it's going to be hard, I think, to... If you can manage it, I think it's going to be a really, really powerful force, like all the swarms and buzzers. But I it's not as easy as it as it seems. I think yeah, they and and they move at a six instead of his one. So timing that of moving each piece. Yeah, it's going to be there's going to be a period of him being exposed. If you want to move anywhere with him. And the way I saw that was you design your list accordingly that you have um, buzzers there to take the damage for him because I believe that's one of their special abilities. Yeah, yeah. So they're loyal until undeath, um, Mothrock. But it'll mean that some, you have to almost like Sacrifice. in the first turn move some buzzers to where he's going to go, hope they survive, leave some buzzers where he is, and then move to the new place where the new buzzers are. Yes. In order to do to do that, but then, I mean, that takes a lot of effort to try and work that right. Like, and and you're not really getting the most of his ten inch movement when that happens. So, and there and those buzzers are using up a lot of energy moving around like that. You know, so. Uh, Drew's right. I think you're gonna. I think if people aren't careful, all these flashy toys look great, but when you come to actually activate them, you're gonna find you're gonna run out of energy real fast. I agree, and as you were saying, that tends to be one of the downsides of the faction. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And if you were playing a game uh, or in a tournament where there was energy on the field and you could get the investors to sit on that, that would be very, very handy for this faction. Um, well, you can always take, like, your larvae, like, batteries and stuff like that, but you really then, it's like those, although they can really be super helpful, but they become like a massive Achilles heel to anyone because they're not hard to kill and they don't really move fast in counterattack larvae. Eh? So... um turn one someone flies over with their own air support and blows away the larvae and all of a sudden you spend the rest of the game starving for energy um with your stuff so you just got to be really careful um on the investors they are powerful if they have all the energy well that brings us on to the buzzers um compared with mothrock which is sr1 the buzzers are sr6 which is what you were just talking about and alluding before anthony that you've really mm. got and you're moving because they're not moving at the same speed or or time or, or as um, Drew was saying, with the same range either because Mothrock does 10, uh, they do 8. So you've really got to plan your, plan your movements. But that loyal till death I think is a very useful ability if you can plan it out um, where they can sort of, if they're within 2 inches, they can sort of take the damage for Mothrock. Yeah. They're only 4 to take. They do have 1 energy. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're efficient, which I think mm. is worth noting, which means they get to perform one action for free. So one action for free plus one energy means that they could be moving. They might not be able to do anything, but then they've got that extra energy that they can give away to somebody else mm. uh, in, in, that, in covering. I think that can, for a four-point unit, that's actually quite useful, I think, because it's quite yeah. 
And with moth rock, you can have as many number of these as you want. And yeah. It's four. So yeah. a lot of these guys sort of swarm. Yeah, you can have like 20 of them swarming yeah. around. Uh, hey, what's moth rock? Tw- I can't, I can't moth remember his eight, points eight, now. Eight, 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 yeah, you can have 20 buzzers <laughs> just buzzing around in 100 points. Um, yeah, I'm not sure they're going to do a lot, though. You know, the stiff breeze will blow them over two shields with three hit points. But if they swarm attack with Mothrock, they just tear through one at a time mm. uh, if they can get into that that sort of um, scenario. So that's the buzzers. And as I say, that loyal to death is good, assuming they can keep up with Mothrock because as I mm. said, only eight. And assu- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then in combination, you've then got the Swarm, which again, only five points for a Swarm, and it's a continued five points. Uh, one Energy, they're efficient again. They're an SR2, so they're moving almost as fast as Mothrock. Um, they get one range attack, but that three close attack makes them very dangerous. That's assuming you don't lose some of them in the process because these act like units, don't they, Anthony? You, you lose. Yeah, that's right. So you'll lose them. I think they still keep the close attack, though. But you'll look like you look with three hit points and two shields. You're probably going to lose most of them in one hit. Yes. Um, but you might be left with one, which is still good with three close attack. But you just one range attack won't do anything really. No, you're really taking these to get up close and personal, and mm. three or four other swarms with it. Yeah. Um, the most important unit I know for Anthony's set um, when <laughs> we get onto the list is the Sumner. I'll get Anthony, you can talk through this one um, because obviously you've taken it and I know that you have a uh, way of how you're planning to use this one and I believe when people hear how you're about to use it, they may wish to take this one as well. Well, to me, the Sumner is just a level four necromancer pretty much. <laughs> So he's, he actually has um, Power Core, which allows um, him to actually do a super ability every activation. So he's doing two super abilities per turn. And for me, that's all he's going to be doing with those with his energy. I think it's four energy. I, I can't see. I'm pretty sure it's four. Um, it is four for 20 points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's just going to go spam. Infected, spam, infected. And if he needs to use a force field on himself, he will. And um, so he's just going to spam out infected and just flood the board with infected, basically. That's 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 the goal. Like, um, we'll get to my list in a minute, but that's, that's how I see it. But the only drawback to that is that if he dies, which is not easy feat, right, with four shields and ten hit points... I mean, that's pretty that's pretty strong. Um he's only got movement four, so he's not running away, essentially. Like the maggot in that case. They're very slow, but once yeah, they, it, they just keep spawning. Yeah, yeah. And so that's sort of what's gonna happen. Hopefully though, like if you think about it, like his four shields and ten hit points, unless he gets attacked by something really strong like a beast lord, then he could be spawning Rather than fight back in close attack, which he's still pretty good in close attack, right? Yeah. Four close attacks, nothing silly. Um, he can still be spawning infected to attack whoever's attacking him um, or lend weight to whoever's attacking him. So he's he's probably tougher than the queen, I think, in that regard. So um, as long as he has enough energy... So he's going to be really tough to take down. So I think people are going to get quite frustrated trying to play against the summoner. Well, because he doesn't move anywhere. He looks sort of weak and small. He doesn't really move anywhere. He doesn't have any range attack. But then they try and engage him. In <laughs> so um, and he's all these infected are just coming out. If if someone goes to shoot you, you just raise infected in front of you to screen you, give you extra shield dice. Um, if they can even see you at all, depending how many infected you raise. I think he's really good. Well, that brings us on to the infected. Um, and they're slow, but they've got two close attack, 
two shields, three hit points. They uh, can't get any objectives. No. And they die when the they die when the Summer. person that create created them die. I don't think they get any they can't boost or anything like that. No. But it's numbers, overwhelming numbers that you mm. likely to face. So if if um the summoner is doing two red dice a turn, you're suggesting. Is that right? Yeah. Um, well, it depends zero. who's rolling it. If I'm rolling it, then we probably won't ever see any infected. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you want <laughs> black dice, isn't it, Anthony? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But if someone else is rolling it, we might see, you know, one or two. Um, you probably see three on average. Yep. Um, but right. yeah. And so over, say, two or three rounds, you could have nine infected on the board just from That's that. right. Yeah. yeah, and if you take the uh, upgrade as well with the crit dice, you just get some on the board straight away. They, they, look, they're not – because they can't claim objectives and all that, and they're pretty slow. Um, but they're a, like a distraction, aren't they? Any range attack sent their way is not sent towards the important units so that's sort of i think that's probably the most powerful because we're really gonna have yeah so i was just gonna say even if you're taking a really powerful buzzer swarm list you're killing buzzers and swarms you're getting victory points you know so whereas infected were free but the infected i'll actually drew you go first and then i'll ask my question please all, all I was going to say is people are going to really have to practice target priority whenever they're playing, especially against something like the list that you made, Anthony, of just like what is most important or what do I have to do to either complete the objective or am I going to try to go for a board wipe kind of yeah. balance? Well, my, th- my thing is that if you if you're fighting infected, if you kill and the summoners in the list, of course, and you kill the summoner, like that should be priority number one. Because once you kill the summoner, then you lose however many, all the infected that it created throughout the game, which will, like, you'll find the, the, the Hive Lords player will just be like, oh, where's my army gone? <laughs> it's like completely, completely collapsed. And you'll have real, it, it it's, going to be quite a dramatic effect i think for the player um that's playing against them because they're gonna feel quite overwhelmed and then they kill the summoner and all of a sudden massive res- respite right like because there's nothing on the board there's a couple of couple of little dudes on the board that are easily taken care of so the priority will be kill the summoner and so my question was with the infected, obviously they need energy and to actually... No, they don't. Okay, that's they don't use energy. So they just get um patients for free, yeah. do they? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. With the infected, a unit with this rule gets two free activations per turn and may not power boost. Yeah, so basically they're almost like moving terrain pieces around around the board. So they can't boost anything or anything like that. And they don't give victory points, which makes them good cannon fodder. Yeah, they're just fodder, basically. The whole the whole I wanted to create like with the Hive Lords and a little bit with the investors with the clones. I wanted in the meta of the game. Because even though each of the factions play quite differently in the meta, I really wanted a spanner in the works with a completely different type of meta force to play against. And so, um, you know, you obviously you got your beast lords, which are like, your, they have a certain way you would play against them. You know, valiants are probably middle of the road and, and, you know, you got overlords with the way they deal with their energy and stuff like that with a, a lot of efficient and adrenaline. Running that, running that force, but with the infestors, I, I really want to get to that point where, if you, 
don't play them right, you're going to get overwhelmed. And that play, play against them right, you're going to get overwhelmed. You need to have a plan to put into everybody's list in a meta in, let's say, a six-game tournament or something like that. They need to put a way of like dealing with assassinating a character in some way. So um, in order to ensure that they don't get overwhelmed by investors. Will happen by the turn three, absolutely, assuming they can roll red dice properly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So that covers all the new units. Uh, that brings us on to our lists, I believe. Um, so I've got my list here. Um, I didn't choose to go so much with, although I do have the Queen and she does have, obviously, the new ability of Circus Virus. Um, I ha- I took the Queen and I took a Mothrock list. So okay. I've got the Mothrock with four swarms at their side. Wow, yep. Um, and one buzzer, and the buzzer was there to sort of take ablative wounds. Yep, basically is there to get Mothrock across the table to start doing what I wanted to do, which is overwhelm with its four swarms or at least two swarms to survive. And mm. so they're all attacking at the same time, surrounding a target and taking it down. Mm. While we've got the queen sort of coming up the middle, um, or alternatively flying across and, and backing them up. And then you've got the Mantis and the Beetle, um, which have some range attack ability, sort of providing some cover. Mm. Uh, and then you've got Maggot there that could tunnel up technically because you've got mm. the ability. Oh, terrifying. they're terrifying lists yeah. to look at. So even though it can't move very fast, if the tunneling works for you and it does appear on the table, uh, which again comes back to my poor rolling of dice too, Anthony, <laughs> Maggot could just pop up and join Mothrock in whatever it's swarm attacking. Um, which would be absolutely mm. terrifying. So I'm not even sure conspiracy could take that level of um, beating up if if they all were to swarm attack at the same time. So, yeah, um, I think that's once again. I think in theory, it to me looking at that list, it it I don't know if Drew thinks the same, but it's like it looks terrifying. But in reality, it's not always that easy when you think that the swarms only have three three health. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's chip damage death. <laughs> Very yeah, much. I so. mean that's a lot of models moving at you at the same time that you know you're you're trying to process. Like you said, it it looks like a lot, but once you kind of start whittling it down, but yeah, it's psychologically like really fast. And that's that's um, that's what I was just saying about the hive lords. Is you, it, psychologically, it's it's terrifying to to face, but it also really crumbles away the minute you start concentrating on, okay, focus, focus, like, you know, three, two shots and a swarm's gone, you know, um, if you re- you know, against two shields. Like, and that's that's long range shots, right? So I think you, I think, It'll it'll be one of those things where you look at it across the table and you go, "Oh my word, how am I gonna, how am I gonna face sort this out?" And once you start focus firing and stuff like that, things down, I think it, you'll find it crumbles away really fast. And in so doing, losing some of my energy because, of course, I'm using yes swarms and the buzzers. They're only one energy, but for you know four or five points, it's one energy for each of those. So that yeah. my total energy to nineteen. But you take out three of those swarms and the buzzer, and that mm. really limits my ability to be able to do things. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I managed to get 19, 19 points of energy there, but mm. it's gonna a lot of that's gonna crumble away fairly quickly. Yeah. Um. So that that was my list. Um, and, and hopefully it would make it across the table, but I, I suspect at least I'm going to lose three swarms. And it dep- it, It'll depend what um, terrain and stuff you're playing against as well. Like if there's a lot of open fields of fire, um, you know, like a desert board or something like that, I think you might really struggle. Yes. Um, but in, in the city, it might do quite well. That would be my hope. But, yeah, you are right. In a desert open fire scenario if there's no cover i think they're going to get absolutely annihilated um 
That brings me on to your list, Anthony. Ah, yes. This is my balls out list. It's like, it's like, you know, what? I, I think I've got like uh, four models there essentially because I'm not really counting larvae in that. And um, two of those models are going to be tunneling. So I'm actually starting, <laughs> I'm starting on turn one with the queen and the summoner. And their whole job is to, funnily enough, after I sent this list to you, I actually realized I should have put the Summon Infected upgrade on the Queen yes. rather than Termite. So then she can do it first turn um, and just get more. Because the whole idea is to pump out as many Infected as I can to create all those distractions and protections and stuff like that. So... Hopefully by turn two, I've got, you know, I think I said to you there'd be 10 or something like that on, on our conference, but more likely it'll probably be about four or five. <laughs> that's terrifying if you've got four or five additional units on the table. And yeah, that's, that's right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that's really the hope is that it's just going to create multiple distractions for people like and i'm just going to throw those infected away like if they if they get within any sort of charge range to anyone they're just going to get in base to base contact and they'll get they'll get killed but it doesn't matter because they stopped you from firing for a turn and you know so stopped you from moving for a turn you and know so yeah so um that's really what it is it's just swamp people and really maggot and termite are there like, yeah, they could um, tunnel up and take out, like, batteries and stuff like that, which is probably what I would use them for, but they can also tunnel up onto the objectives. So, um, you know, while everyone's dealing with infected, they just stand on the objectives. So, hopefully. Well, and there's, uh, there's always the outside chance that the infected are going to stick around because, you know, we all know that you can whiff on attack dice. Yeah. Unfortunately, your defense dice can surprise you. So, I mean, they, they can be a bit more than a speed bump and, you know, death by a thousand cuts, yeah, especially true. with your, with your list where you're like, here's 12, you know, infested coming at you and everything. And you roll one or two successes every now and then, like, you can, yeah, well, the you thing is, as well, down. yeah. But the other thing as well is if you, are engaging people in close attack with infested and that person doesn't kill the infested outright in one turn, well, then next turn it could have one to two supporting infested like coming in as well. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're just going to get dragged down. Like even though they're terrible, they're going to get, you're going to get dragged down. So um, the idea is if you, if you kill them outright, then you're fine. But you only need one to stay in base to base contact on one. And well, you could, I guess, if you damage them, you could disengage and then move away. But you know, that's um I don't know how many people do do you guys use disengage much? Not too often. Um I have used it once or twice. Um, but usually it's against conspiracy and no. I Unit to be in base to base contact with when it starts rolling its dice as well. Mm. Uh, but with these, I think if you can disengage, that'd be a very helpful thing, particularly if you've got two. Mm. Yeah, it depends on the army and, and the situation, but it is a very useful thing to have in your back pocket if you can kind of set it up right. Yeah. So, Anthony, do these units when they group attack? The, inf the infected, do they get the black dice with each subsequent unit that comes into base-to-base -base contact or because you said no boosting? This isn't boosting. It's no, they can't They can't boost. Like, like When I say no boosting, no power boosting, so you can't choose to boost your attacks with an extra like cube and stuff like that. But, but case, they, they would... will still get their close attack in this edition. Yes. And that, that obviously each one adds an extra dice to 
to their role, don't they, when they come base to base? Yes, they still get the multi tack bonus in in this and in the future. But they might not always get the crit dice. And that's where you end up in that situation of one on one, you're okay, but uh three on one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. In yeah. You just got just don't get people stacking up on you. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's the thing to avoid in a combiner can be dragged down by multiple um units stacking up. Absolutely. Look, it's a great list. Um, obviously, you uh, would like to change Summon Infected to the Queen rather than put it on the turn off. Yeah, just so I can get it off on turn one and discard it straight away so I can I can start the pressure from turn one. Whereas if, if um, uh, Termite is tunnelling, I won't be able to do that until he arrives. So I would move that to, move that to that. Move that across in this particular case. And then I think you invest yeah. on the Queen, didn't you? Hey? Invest as a power boost on the Queen. Oh, yeah, that's a chain lightning, essentially. Yeah. yeah, so if she shoots someone, then she can use that and it damages them. Then she can use um, her second attack to shoot from that person. So it sort of allows you to shoot around corners if if that person's on the edge of a corner of a building or something that you can't see around and stuff like that. It, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like super powerful, but it, it's one of those ones that can actually catch you out. Like if you have a smaller bot standing on objective around the corner of a building and the larger bot in front of the building that, that the enemy can't see, see the smaller bot but can see the larger bot and the larger bot gets shot and damaged then you can use the line of sight of the larger bot to shoot the smaller bot stand on the objective um so yeah it's just a little bit of a cheeky uh a cheeky annoying thing i do, I, I put it in the list because i just feel like in a situ- tournament situation it could come in really handy and catch someone out absolutely Take somebody off an objective or off an energy. Plate. Yeah, or, or kill a battery that you would never normally be able to fight, like get to and stuff like that. Very useful ability. And it's only five points too, so it's not an overly costly. Mm. Yeah. It's a good it's a good list. Would you ever mm. use stealth with the larvae? Would I let, use what? Stealth with the larvae, because that's their special ability, isn't it? Stealth? Well, you have to be in stealth to be hosted. Yes. Yeah, so so the larvae would be in, in they would start stealth in um as a symbiote. Yeah, as a symbiote in Maggot, and they would travel with him um when it's tunneling. So Okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. And I I'd actually didn't realise um the termite had armored might too, which I thought was interesting. Such a low cost character with armored might, that's a very useful ability as well. Yeah, it's like a discount maggot. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, Gotta have the energy to activate it, but it makes. Yeah, it- of course. And it's like gonna be. And armored might's one of those ones where that always like looks amazing, like when you see what it does. But I've always struggled to work it, even in like a Beast Lords list where it's really common. It's like, it's not. Like it chews up energy and it's very situational. Like it's great if you're in close attack, but I find if you're in close attack where you need armored might, then you might be dead before you get to use it anyway. <laughs> so so it's sort of like one of those weird ones, I think, that you got to be some sort of genius with your strategy ratings and that in order to get the absolute maximum out of armored might. Well, when I was putting together my list, I noticed that, and tell me if if this interaction is correct, is if you have Termite with Armored Might and Mindless Beast, you could not upkeep it one turn, and then a turn later, say you're in close combat, you could kick Armored Might back on. Yeah, you can. So, so like, you could use it to getting close or whatever. But it's still using the same amount of energy, though, isn't it? Yeah, but you could skip a turn. Like if you didn't 
have the energy or you yeah, need yeah, to yeah, move yeah, it yeah. somewhere else, you could kick it back on. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more versatile, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you're still costing you two energy to activate it. And it'll depend on strategy rating as well, whether uh, I think turn strategy rating is three, is it? Two. Kind of, I, My apology, three, yes. Yeah. Three. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's activating pretty, you got to activate it pretty early. So you might be good against the majority. It might be quite a strong one against the majority of other characters. So being activated so early. Well, that's the other thing about the the list of any um, Hive Lord slash Infester is a lot of the SRs are quite low. They're ones, twos, threes, fours. Yeah, the um, I think I can't actually read that. They're so small. I think is that sixteen energy? Yes, in total. In that, yeah, in that total list. So, like, if I'm running. Because I think most four, four of those energy, uh, sorry, uh, eight of those energy are in the larvae. Yes, I that's think. Correct. Yeah, so they're all stealthed in MAGA using that energy, which means I've got eight energy to run maggot, summoner, um, termite. Yes, and yeah. Which is not a lot. I mean, the queen could get more with fueled by hatred, and I think I've given her an extra energy um, with one of those upgrades. The cheaper of the the extra energy upgrades, so it's not like I can be running armored might with termite and do both of the summoner, like um, summon infected, yes. and the queen's <laughs> super built. I mean, that's a lot of energy. When you think about how much that you've got to pump out of energy there to get those super abilities all activated in the turn, right? Basically, the turn one, I'll you I'd use maggots energy in the pool because he won't need it because it's not arriving till turn two, but I have to have the larvae energy on them because they're getting transported in symbiote form by maggots. So they all their energy has to stay on them. I guess in a tournament situation, I could keep Larvae 4 out as a battery if I wanted to, if I needed that extra energy. But in turn one, like if I want to create all my summoned infected, then I'm using nearly all of that energy in super abilities and won't be hardly moving or shooting in turn one as a result. You're infected to get them on the board so that they can yeah. stand towards everything and hope yeah. it's all well. Yeah. It's a good list. But as you say, energy starved. Mine was 19, yeah. 16, so yeah, um, makes it hard. And I think I had 51 health points total. You had 43 in total with your list. But you've got a lot. Ah, but technically, I've got way more. Correct. That's <laughs> what I was about to say. Because once you've got those infected on the table, that pushes it up a lot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you're giving to gain in this particular case, and you'll be gaining a yeah. lot. Assuming you can keep the queen and more importantly the summoner alive, uh, correct for that first and second turn. Good list. Yep. That brings us to Drew. Talk us through your list. Yeah, um, my general idea was uh, for someone maybe just getting into the investors or whatever the the hive lord set the the set that you've got on and everything. So that's kind of what I based all of this on. Um, I guess more of the old school elite uh, group. Uh, but real quick, before I forget, I do like that you theme this Hive Lords and it is a, a list will rise and fall based on the Hive Lord surviving or not. Which <laughs> <laughs> That um, could which be is, good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, it's thematic and it sticks and everything. It's just, uh, you know, I, I like it when armies have obvious strengths and obvious weaknesses, and that is what gives them balance, you know, overall, instead of like, this is the most awesome guys ever, and they're just not good yeah. at this one thing. Like, um, but well, it's like part your... of making, like, law wise, it's part of making Hive Lords 
a personality in a force that's not really got much personality, like law wise, because mm-hmm. like all of them are sort of like mindless sort of things. It's ha- it's hard to fit actual personalities in there. So game terms, it that sort of fits as far as I can see. Yeah, but I wanted to keep my hive lord alive, so I gave her consume uh, on the queen and everything. So I thought with the circuit virus being able to have infested and everything along with her, even if you dropped her in the back lines from air support or however you wanted to play her as, you know, the linchpin heavy hitter. Um, I gave beetle infest because I thought that was a interesting combination of his lower SR and surge. So you could, surge who you needed to and then bounce that to like you said you know an objective grabber or somebody small or you know trying to get that little hit and i i I really like that upgrade that's that's probably one of my favorite ones that you added in Mm. um i I see a lot of the hive lord stuff they're they're a very if then faction um as if you can pull this off then that is very powerful. But if you don't, then, you know, it, they kind of fall. Um, <laughs> yeah. That'll be me. That'll be me. Right. Like, oh, yeah. You yeah. Roll anything but a zero. And they're like, oh, zero. <laughs> yep. That, no, I, I feel you. Um, but yeah, I threw in the, the, you know, guard or whatever you want to call them, termite locust. Um, I put extra sustenance on Roach just with the regeneration and everything. I figured they would be able to stick around the longest. Um, and then, yeah, uh, the swarm and buzzers for objective grabbers and energy batteries. And if you needed to poke at somebody. Um, but yeah, 19 energy, 50 overall HP. Uh, just a, I, I felt like it was a fairly well-rounded list and again it's something that you can buy a single box of and throw out i was very tempted to make a maggot mothrock list and just have a a, kind of a mix between you guys two or you all of what you made and just have like a big zerg list coming down yeah yeah cool too but what i like about your list is you still got lots of range ability in that list compared with some of the other lists like my list You've, the 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 hive lord mages like you, the queen and uh, mothrock they can shoot but the other mm-hmm. can't it's very much about close attack where with your list you still have a bit of range attack ability where you can shoot and sort of snipe things down particularly if you get in that 10 inches so um it's it completely changes the way you play the game yeah it, it is a very I don't know if versatile is the right word, but you do have options as to what range you want to engage your your enemy at. It's definitely like a more a safe list, I think, because mm-hmm. even though like in infestors, this type of list would probably be on the weak side, but because of mindless beasts, it's actually stepped up a notch in hive lords. So I think it's probably the most as you say, most versatile, adaptable, but also the the most risk free of the lists. Yeah, because because the other lists are very much like, yeah, this could be like super, like ridiculously powerful and actually scary if it all works, but it also could be complete trash and collapse in a heap. Whereas you yours is like, okay, okay, it's going to be tough, but. I can see how I can handle it, but at the same time, you don't have that massive downside as well. Yeah. I can tell you for a fact, I've heard of a friend and he played a list very similar to this and he absolutely annihilated me the first time he played this list. Second time, wow. wiped him out. But yeah, <laughs> it's all about how well you roll those dice and he really played well with with on that that one turn. Just completely and utterly routed my, my team. I, um, I think I was playing... Was I playing? I think it was coils, and it just completely wiped out. It just managed to get my ABM, and all of a sudden, my range ability was greatly uh, affected. Mm. Sudden, 
everything started falling apart. So yeah, a few good roles with a list like that and you can do quite well. Yeah. And you know, I, I did that video comparing the, the investors to the hive Lords and everything. And, and one thing that I feel like really changes things for the hive Lords is the upgrades, like the, the, the investors ones were, were cool and everything, but I feel like just these new ones just really change the flavor of them and kind of, boost how you want to play um as as a small like ambient price to whatever units you're gonna buy into i like your list i think it'll play quite well i'm i'm excited to get it on the table especially since i started came up with my paint scheme and everything no oh, yeah it was good a paint scheme Thoroughly. was good Looked like a christmas beetle do you have christmas beetles there like we call them christmas beetles over here they're mm -hmm. sort of like really sort of like goldy, shiny or colors. Maybe June bugs. Is that what you, that's what uh, we kind of call them around here. They come around at, like in here in summer, in Christmas time, they come up out of the yard. Like um, maggot is based on a lawn grub that we have here, which becomes a Christmas beetle. Okay. Um, it might be the same thing or close cousins, but yeah. I, I was, I was trying to find something that like, translated that that weird you know degraded feel of the infestors mm. um by giving it kind of a tonal variation and and you know one of the best ways to do that with color is having contrasting colors on the color wheel so i went with like a, a dark mauve and then a chartreuse which i realized after i painted it kind of looked like devastator from the original transformers um, but with it kind of desaturated them when I wet blended them together and I had it on a uh, yeah. metallic base and they were all done with speed paint. So it still had that metal feel to it. So it was like, this doesn't quite work, but it does at the same time, which is what I was <laughs> yeah. going for that, that uncomfortable feel. I think people liked it. There was a lot of likes on that from, from memory. And I thoroughly encourage everybody to check out your post there, Drew. It was a fantastic painting up with those metallic. I appreciate it. Really, Can I just say that we need way more people posting on the Facebook group their stuff because it's, it's. I'm sorry to um, go off topic a little bit, but it drives me nuts. There's so many people out there that have bot war, that are doing bot war and stuff like that, and they don't post anything on the group. It drives me crazy. Where's my inspiration come from? More it's good that you have to fuel all of us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it gets tiring fueling everybody else. So it'd be good to see lots more people, no matter what it is. It's just like get it up on the group. Even if it was just Whip Wednesday. That's right. Work it properly. How hard is it to do Whip Wednesday? Yeah. Crazy. What are people doing? <laughs> Well, that'll be homework for everybody. Whip Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Up on Whip Wednesday. <laughs> I got plenty of those. <laughs> Look, we've got one more list. Stuart couldn't join us tonight. He had a uh, very special engagement, which we, we can't say any more about. But um, he does provide us with a list. And um, he he's sort of taken the Moth Rock and the Summoner, uh, which is... And a the list. Maggot. And the Maggot. Um, so he's dropped the Queen. And then he's got swarms and larvae, just lots of swarms and larvae. So he actually <laughs> managed to pull out 20 energy. Um, and infected he'll energy. have as well if he's and got the infected. summoner. And he managed to get a hit point level of 47. Um, and he's still got consume and extra sustenance and summon infected in there. So mm. um, I thought it was quite a, a, a good list. Um, obviously, the larvae being used probably more as batteries. I could be wrong. Mm. Um, Oh, he'll probably have some in the maggot. I bet you he'd tunnel the magnet, uh, the ma magnet, ma uh, the maggot. Yes. Um, but yeah, he might not have all the larvae in in mag maggot. But I reckon he's going to be summoning similar to what you were doing, Anthony. Lots and lots of yeah, yeah. and getting him out on the field. So um, I might say. With his hit points being 47, you're really facing 60 or 70 points of hit points by the time all the summonings actually occurred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's got like the agility of the swarms and the moth rock. 
um, which can fly around. And then you've got things like larvae and uh, tumming, tunneling up with the maggot um, to sort of pop up and attack things anywhere and everywhere on the board or taking an objective. So quite a good list. Thoughts, guys? People are just going to have to work out how to take out the summoner because you don't want to just get overwhelmed with dudes like um, infected popping out of the ground everywhere. Well, but like you were talking about when you Mark pulled up his card and everything, you know, four close combat, four shield, ten health, like you're going to spend a couple of turns trying to chip away at him while he's chucking bodies yeah, you at need, you. Well, the the thing is, if you get an early surge, that will do Because he'll have four energy sitting on him, right? Yes. Like, he'll have... Because he's, he wants to do his um, thing. If you go to any, like, a surge three or lower, or if you break ties, then a surge four or lower... If you just get a surge on him, he'll have four energy sitting there. That's four additional damage. That'll be how you do it. Or hit him with a nuclear shells, and all of a sudden he can only do one um, because he hasn't got the energy because everything costs double, right, or an extra energy, and he won't have the energy to do um, more than one summon per turn. That's assuming they can get to him, though, because, you, as you say, he's probably going to be hiding behind something, summoning yeah, yeah. and placing them yeah. within, you know, within the range. So um, you've still got to progress up the table to get to him, which yeah. means you've got to have a tunneler. Um, air su support. Or air support. But mm. if you're playing Valiance, you won't necessarily have that ability. True. At the moment. Unless it's something like Cadmia or Starfighter. Um, yeah, yeah. They'd be about or when Blue Speedsters come out, Star Charger and Starfighter transporting four scouts. That would be pretty deadly. But um, apart from Trashes would be in trouble. They'd have to Trashes, up. yeah. Trashes, I think, are going to be, well... Can you ever say that trashes will be in trouble? That's that's the question. Well, it's like sorry, the summoner will be in trouble once the trashes get there, but they've got to progress up the table to get to him. Yeah, but then trashes can also kill easily two infected per swing. <laughs> so so it'll just be like mm, I can see the I can see the trashes battling through just like infected bodies going everywhere as they try and bash through. I mean, they unless they run on a trash saw bus, um, they actually might be in trouble. But then they could just disassemble, I guess, and, and kill all the infected. But, yeah. Oh, they you do have Fury, which is the trashers who can move like... She's got like a 20-inch charge or something crazy um, if you're taking Fury. So... Yeah, trashes. Tr I feel trashes can punch their way out of everything. They can, but they've got to spend energy to do it. And so, yeah, well, that's that's true. That's I true. You can actually throw infested at them or the infected. Well, the infected will actually them. damage their generators, maybe. Well, and essentially just slow them down. They still kind of be able to progress past them. So if they mm. get up next to them and sort of. Yeah, they can take them down easily, but they've got to spend mm. energy to do that. And so every mm. time they're spending energy, more infested or infected uh, <laughs> out to replace the, yeah, replace what's actually. It's certainly a scary thought. I have this. I have this feeling though that in reality, we're thinking like huge numbers of infected are going to arrive. But, but I just have this feeling that the way I roll is not going to be like that. It's going to be sort of like. You know, when you let the air out of a balloon, it's just going to get... <laughs> that'll be my... That'll be my... Oh, yeah. Uh, wait, was it that Simpsons episode where Bart buys that sponge dinosaur thing and he has this vision <laughs> of, like, winning the dinosaur, he grows up to this giant thing and grabbing leaks? <laughs> and what really happened is it just, like, went down the drain. 
that's pretty much what I feel that my um, list of infected um, summoning capabilities is going to be. It's just going to be like, oh, has some infected with SR10. And then the very next turn, the infected before they've even moved, I just shot down in a, in a single shot from a from a like a battery or something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I just and yeah. blast will do a good chunk to them too. Yeah, well that's true as well. Yeah. So um But I do uh, like that there's no there is no unit or <laughs> strategy where it's like this is obviously going to win me the game there is always a counter strategy or faction or something where no one is ever the best and is going to for sure run rough shot and that's one thing i love about this game is that it's just like i mean dice rolls of course because it's a dice game but people and their strategies and what units they bring with which faction can change just so much. Yeah, my some goal of them is... are... Yeah, go on. Because some of them obviously have an upper hand against other factions, but some of them, you know, don't, so... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thinking that over a six-game meta that you should hit two two factions that are really going to give you a hard time in that time. So, you know, if like, for instance, if you're running Electro Times drone army, like was packed with surge, then you should hit overlords or Atlanticans. Yeah. Or Atlanticans. That's right. Overlords or Atlanticans. And which basically overlords just make your surge pointless. Cause they've got like one energy on them. Yeah. Um, and the Atlantic and Tritonauts are immune to surge. So, and and so if you put all your stock in that one ability, like to to get you through, and you hit those two, then you're going to go down the tournament tables. That's that's the idea of it, anyway. I don't know if that's yeah. going to all work in how it works, but yeah. And as we progress to Bot War 3, uh, just over a year's time, things will be chipped at. And then... Yeah, just under a year's time now. Yeah, I think so. Just under a year's time. It should be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm excited there's not to much, about it. There's not much diff. Like, there's not, like, huge differences. Should we talk about this? Or we haven't got time to talk about this. We We can talk about it next time, maybe. Well, and obviously we've got to talk about a different faction. If we got to... I should always I should always fit in, Mark, that um when we have, we mentioned Bot War Three now, I have to fit in that everything's backward compatible. So no one freak out. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know what people that... are like, right? Because years of years of coaching from another big company we won't mention <laughs> means that the minute you buy everything, everything's like no good anymore. It's like, oh it's like I've just spent you know, a thousand dollars on this stuff and got this limited edition book, and now it's like completely useless. Yeah, that's not what Traders Galaxy <laughs> is about at all. Everything you can use backwards compatible. So, um, so yeah, do not worry about any of that. Everything's still on sale. Everything's fine. <laughs> Nothing to see. <laughs> Small tweaks to enhance what. Well, we're you going- know what people are like, right? Like I think we mentioned. Um, um, we mentioned Bot War 3 last week for the first time in the group. And within a day, someone was like, oh, I was going to buy this, but then I heard that this is going to happen. And, like, they're already worried that stuff's going to be, like, redundant from their thing. And it's like, I, I don't know why other big companies do that because you don't have to make it like that, that stuff becomes redundant you can still change things up without making everything that people have purchased redundant that would drive me nuts personally i've just spent you know the last three years painting a army i need to have it become redundant in the very next edition this is like what that's like we all know how much time we have to like paint and build stuff which is always limited 
when we're getting to our age with families and life and stuff like that. And to to finally finish your army have a become redundant is like something out of like candid camera or something like that. So no. Paint your army, buy all your stuff, everything's gonna be here, it's all gonna be fine. You might find some of your stuff nothing should do worse, but most of your stuff will be a bit better. Enhancements. 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 That's yeah. a that's a very good word. Thank you, Mark. Enhancements. <laughs> we are enhancing the game. <laughs> it's always good to talk with you guys. Um, we'll obviously get together again probably in just a month, just over a month's time, start talking about a different faction. Has anybody had any ideas on what that faction might be? So everybody at home has got a bit of an idea what we might do. I'd like I to talk actually. Red Stars. Ooh, uh, Red Stars. Should we leave that, though? Because I haven't got um, the guide may not be ready until November. Okay. okay. So we can maybe do Red Star in November. Okay. Well, let's... But I don't know what to do next month. Should we pick an old one? I don't know. It's up to you guys. I'm... But I definitely do want to do Red Star, but we, I just don't have any of the studio painted stuff and I don't have the guides sorted. Uh, green Spectres? That'd be good. Uh, I'm open to options. Yep. All right. Let's lock in Green Spectres for our next show. Uh, which yeah. I always like to oh, get... Sure. We could do it. We could either do green specters or we could do like a random. You could like just pick one that you like yourself and do three randoms, but that's up to you. Watch this space. <laughs> yeah. Well, <that's> just, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm, throwing, <laughs> I'm throwing spanners to Mark. I can see his brain just going. Rrr. I'm a planner. I like planning. Yeah, that's he's like, I'm, I'm the opposite. I don't plan anything. <laughs> Always good to talk with you guys. Um, we'll look forward to our next show. Uh, thank you again to Drew and to Anthony. Um, yeah. We'll look forward to seeing you again in the next Bot War post. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. See ya. Thanks, Drew. Thank you.